selection rules and how do you find out the selection rule you find out the selection rule from the quantum theory and if you see that i have already shown this uh, to the previous uh, wikipedia page and for the normal zeeman effect you don't have to consider the magnetic dipole moment uh, a spin angular magnetic dipole moment you have to only consider the magnetic dipole moment associated with the orbital angular moment and if you go to anomalous zeeman effect then what happens if your atom is not showing only three different spectral lines but it is showing more than three so this is the normal zeeman effect when the magnetic field is off you will see one line when the magnetic field is on you will see three spectral lines but for anomalous zeeman effect you see when the magnetic field is off only one but when the magnetic field is on there are more than three so what is the reason now let us suppose that we don't we have already discovered that there is n like all principal quantum numbers we have already discussed there is l like linear orbital angular momentum we have al already discovered that there should be quantized for linear orbital momentum there should be quantized quantized rule for principal orbital momentum principal principal number that's n so we have considered all these things and from there we are getting these three lines but here there are more lines than three means that we are missing something there should be more energy levels in between which we are not counting and that energy levels or that quantized energy levels those energy levels are not continuous because its lines are discrete so this thing shows us that the definitely the energy levels are not continuous but we are missing those how do you find out so then like the spin uh, stan gar like uh, everyone came and yeah let us before explaining this one i can Uh, i should tell you about the discovery of spin so let us discover let us check this i should say stanger like experiment yeah yeah so stanger like experiment they want to verify first whether the orbital angular momentum are quantized or not they even didn't know that they will discover spin angular momentum they thought that if there should be l equals to 0 so corresponding ml should be also 0 so the ml value should not be splitted so we should not receive or we should not see any splitting of energy in the spectrum or in the yeah in the spectrum or in the uh, whenever they have uh, like they didn't uh, try with the spectrum they have just target they have a target and it's, it is passing through a uh, inhomogeneous magnetic field and homogeneous magnetic field and if the l value is zero so whether it is inhomogeneous but since the l value is zero means ml value is zero so this elect uh, this atom should be go should pass to it and it should be undeflected it should not deflect that is their assumption and that's why they wanted to verify that the l or ml value should be quantized and it should not give us any continuous kind of deflection or something it should be undeflected since the ml value is zero but shockingly it didn't happen and they they discovered instead of being undeflected it goes one half of the uh, elect uh, atom goes top half of it goes down it was a mystery for them so yeah so look here the stern galick experiment demonstrated that the special orientation of the angular momentum is quantized so why this is quantized because it is showing us the nature through the experiment that yes it is quantized if it is not then we should get a continuous value on the screen ah okay so let us see uh, that uh, this stanglick experiment was done involving silver atoms that is neutral silver atoms and it was a inhomogeneous magnetic field was chosen just to create a inhomogeneous 
magnetic field and then they shoot this neut neutral particle and they show they have show uh, they show uh, they show that this thing uh, those neutral atom particles instead of going undeflected they goes to two different places on the screen so then it was discovered that it is not only a linear angular momentum something more than that is present with the electrons or with the atoms so then they discovered it is a spin property of the electron and it is that time it was like the like a phenomenon like classical spinning magnetic dipole it was treated like a classical spinning magnetic dipole but right now we, we know the spin is not classical spinning property it's a quantum mechanical spinning and it it is an intrinsic property of the electron like charge so you really don't know uh, about the spin properties of the electrons unless until you measure it so we will go to we will going we will be going to discussing these things just after the video so let us see this fine dialog experiment set up with the quantum magnet This is for classical magnet. Okay, so classically, whenever you you like the uh, uh, the depending on the orientation of the poles, right? So they will arrange on the screen. There should be no quantization. It should be depending on the pole. They will be get aligned or they will be get deviated on the screen. This is the classical thing. That orientation of the when the poles are inverted. The magnet is deflected toward deviation depends on the orientation of the poles. That is the classical magnet. Is it clear? Let us come to the quantum spin. So everybody understand the concept, right? Please do response. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So yes, ma the spin value, yeah, either can be up or down. Now the problem was, let us go to a model discussion of spin. That what is really spin? So spin is actually it's not kind of classical thing that you analyze uh, like you you have a ca classical analogy of art revolving around the sun as well as it is revolving around its own axis but it is not like that it is it is a totally different phenomena when you come to the quantum mechanics so it is like it is an intrinsic property so if i show you that what is spin and they will tell you so let me check that what wikipedia tells I like the Wikipedia because it shows very uh, fascinating videos and images, which is easily explainable for me and also understandable for the students. So Wikipedia says that it is not always recommended. Sometimes Wikipedia uh, can be uh, wrong because it is already it is also written by someone else, which we don't know. Whom, sorry, whom we don't know. So. That's why, but if you know that it is right, then I can recommend Wikipedia as a good uh, book, actually. Spin is a 
conserved uh, quantity carried by ele elementary particles and thus by this uh, composite particles and atomic nuclei and i am really not impressed with their uh, definition but you understand the spin is an uh, uh, spin is a conserved quantity and it is an in intrinsic property like charge so you should know uh, like it is you, you should have it in your mind that's all uh, okay and i don't think here i need to tell something more so yes. so suppose uh, how do you find out that what is spin up and what is spin down and how can quantum mechanical uh, explain it so quantum mechanics you can explain quantum mechanically that since we have a stand girl like experimental setup and this stand girl like experimental setup can be made to orient spin along of any experimentally designed axis how suppose i have a source and source of atoms multi electronic atoms and i design a stand girl like experiment in which the after passing through the uh, uh, after passing through the stand girl like experiment setup the source will get quantized uh, the spin of the source uh, atom or electrons get quantized along two different uh, orientation along z so you are defining basically you are designing to measure the spin of the source that how many particles or how many electrons are uh, spin up and how many of them are in spin down situation or spin down orientation so you design a stand girl like experiment you do the measurement you see there are you get you get deflection on the spin for two different amount of so particles from the source one is z plus another is z minus now you block this you ex design such a way that you block this z minus component and let pass this z plus component to another stand girl like experiment which is also along the designed along the z axis so what you will you will see you will see that there should is on the z plus component and there is no z minus component all right suppose you play with your experimental setup you first pass the source through stand girl like experimental setup along z axis you take the measurements of that beam on the screen and you block one of the beam for the z minus component and you let the pass the beam z plus to another stand girl like experimental setup which is not along z axis but it is along x axis so what you will see you will see after passing through this stand girl like setup your spin will be orient you will see that along the x direction you will see there up half of the component x plus half of it is x minus that means that your z measurement couldn't affect the measurement on x it is independent of the measurement of any other orthogonal body the measurements are completely independent they are not affecting each other when you are shifting to one another body okay this is the first lesson another one suppose you play more you let pass the source to first car stand girl like experiment along z direction block one of its component z minus and let pass z plus to another stand girl like of x axis you will you will also have two different components x plus x minus you block x minus you let it pass x plus component and you design another stand girl like experiment along z axis what you will expect you will expect there are already two components z plus z minus so it is this measurement is not dependent on the previous two measurements it is completely independent so it's not classical theory that you can explain that i have cut it down means i will not get it back so that's why i'm telling you spin is not a quantum mechanical phenomena it's a property of the matter so i think there are some animations so let's see notice no z neutrons are detected at the second is yeah those things are the experiment one source stand girl like experiment 
z plus z minus you block z minus you pass z plus through another measurement of same strand garlic along the z axis you will see there is only passing the z component no z minus let us go to the another this is source this a uh, strand garlic along z direction you pass the z plus block the z minus then you set up another strand garlic along x direction you will see there are two components x plus x minus on the screen let go to the third one source the z axis strand garlic setup you have two components z plus z minus block one of them let it pass the z plus then you block uh, this is another strand garlic along the x axis you block x minus component you let pass the x plus component and through 